I got some more suspension upgrades for the car. This big box says Maximum Motorsports. Let's go roll that intro. Welcome back, everybody. If you know the car, already know that it has a Maximum Motorsports rear setup. We got the torque arm, we got the paint R bar, we got the coilovers. The front end is all my own SLA setup, so double wishbone suspension, but it is still using a stock K member. Yes, you heard that right, it is a stock K member. I have modified it significantly, uh, but in here we have the Maximum Motorsports K member. So this thing will be way, way lighter and much nicer and give a lot more room than what we have currently in the car. But I need to get the one in the car pulled out and then we will go over what changes this one has over the stock modified one. So suspension changes aren't really going to be all that much. Uh, this one, you know, has the raised uh, pickup points. I've already done that on mine as well. So we're not actually gonna get any geometry benefits from this one, but there will be some other benefits. But first I need to get that one all pulled out and we'll lay them next to each other. And we'll actually dive into what makes this K member different than a uh, stock one. So let me get to work. We have the K members laid out. We have the Maximum Motorsports one, and then we have my stock modified one. I also have another completely stock one, but I'm not gonna pull that out. Uh, it's not that much different than the one that I've modified. So one of the big things here is I've cut off the, the spring bucket. So that does make it a little bit lighter, but I've also gone in and added, welded in uh, some C brackets in here for my uh, control arm. So I was able to run uh, control arms at different uh, heights. So you can maybe see that there, there are three holes in this stock K member. So I could raise uh, one inch over stock or two inches over stock, which is similar, but apparently not the same. So I've done a lot of measurements between the two K members just to see what is actually different between uh, the two K members. So the one that everyone wants to know is weight. Uh, they want to reduce the front weight. That's one of the big things that uh, Maximum Motorsports totes is that it uh, reduces uh, the weight of the front, uh, front end of the car while also improving the geometry. So the weight of the Maximum Motorsports K-member, I weighed it with uh, a crane scale that I have with this bar on it, is 38.8 uh, pounds. This one is 49.8 pounds. Uh, after I've done all the modifications on it. So we've actually, uh, we're gonna be losing, you know, 11 pounds just going to that one, which is a, a nice, nice improvement. Uh, that will be good. Uh, this one is quite, quite uh, <laughs> heavy at, you know, almost 50 pounds. Now for the geometry differences. So they tote that they've raised the suspension pickup points, which they have. Uh, I have done the same as well on mine. Mine, since this is a cutout plate, is exactly one inch over factory and then two inches over factory. Uh, I did some measurements from the floor to here and found that the Maximum Motorsports one is actually not quite uh, one inch. So say my one inch high one from the ground is uh, seven and five sixteenths, where this one was seven and a half. So there's actually a three eighths difference uh, between what uh, between this one and that one. So they didn't do actually a, a full inch. They did a little bit less than uh, a full a full inch and that's for both, both of these holes. Uh, but it is raised, so that is a really good improvement. That does uh, help with the, the roll center. Uh, the distances between these for like your control arm is actually the same. You got a three inch on the front and a three and a quarter on the rear. Uh, everything else looks pretty similar. So one thing that I'm actually not really stoked on is ground clearance. Uh, so measuring basically from the ground to the highest point on here will give us like our ground clearance and actually losing an inch of ground clearance by going to the Maximum Motorsports one. So this piece here is just further down than this piece, which is, you know, kind of flat. So that's not great uh it's probably why i've seen some people building uh plates that kind of go over there to help uh protect it and 
things like that. And I might have to do the, the same in the future, but uh, yeah, we're losing an inch of ground clearance right in the center, which is, you know, you got your wheels. So when your wheels go over something, the whole thing, but if you have something in the center or um, the suspension compresses or something like that, yeah, we're losing, losing there. Uh, another thing that is pretty nice is the engine, the engine mounts. So these ones have the factory location and then one inch rear. So that's where uh, these ones kind of lack because they're just the factory ones that you could probably modify it to maybe work uh, one inch back. But yeah, we'll be able to move the engine uh, one inch rearward, which will help with uh, the weight distribution. Another thing is Maximum Motorsports moves their troll pickup points further forward uh, than the factory one. So for that will help with uh, increased caster and with the weight distribution also. For me, it doesn't really matter that much because of how my low control arm design is and uh, the upper control arm and everything. I can move the wheel basically anywhere that I want to in the wheel well. But if you're still on a strut car, it would move your wheel uh, probably a little bit forward. And then they also have different control arms that can move the wheel even further forward. And that will uh, increase your caster, uh, give you more positive caster, which will help with uh, keeping that wheel flat as you're turning. And then also the weight distribution will be a little bit more rearward. Uh, I think that covers the most basic changes other than just like this thing has a lot more clearance. So, you know, it's all, it's tube and rectangular structure uh, construction. So there's a lot more space to get around things for exhaust and the starter and just things like that. Uh, there's a lot more room to work, work around than this uh, beastie thing. One thing that I was unsure of that should kind of work, uh, how I strap my car down is I use this hole right here to put the, the hook into and to strap it down to on the trailer. I think I should be able to still use uh, this part right here to hook the car and to hold it down. That uh, covers it. Uh, if you want to know more about my modified uh, K member, I actually had a video just uh, recently that dropped that. I went over the whole uh, front suspension, the whole SLA system that I have on the car. And I went in depth uh, on the modifications that I did to this K member to make it work. That one is ready to go right out of the box. So let's go ahead and get it installed. We'll need to basically square it up into the car, aligning it to the, the car. We'll square it up with the rear of the axle. We have the K member all installed in the car. We're in the process of doing the alignment. So these K members, you do need to align them into the car to make sure that it is uh, square with uh, the rear tires, basically. So these holes up here are a little bit oversized and also they're slotted going uh, left to right. The rear ones are slotted front to back. So there is a little bit of play, but not that much, but basically need to do alignment. So you have these uh, plumb bobs. So you hang them from the, the rear, from the bolt for the lower control arm. And I don't know if you can see back there, but I have a tape with a mark on the ground. And then you measure, you do that on both sides on the rear. Then you measure front to back on both sides to make sure that uh, this forward placement is uh, correct on them. And then you're supposed to go in and then put in a piece of angle, clamp a piece of angle to this to keep it from going. But since I have this, uh, upper control arm mount. I'm not sitting flush in there, so I'm probably gonna to need to do something about that as well. Put put a piece of metal in there, or, uh, extend this out. I think I'll probably just kind of sandwich a piece of metal, maybe tack it to the frame or something like that, but that's a future me problem. But you do that, get it uh, squared away front to back, and then you do a diagonal from both sides, front to back on the diagonal, and that will do your left to right. So. Right now we are square in the car. I'm gonna to try to maybe make some marks cause I wanna take this back out and we'll put the engine onto it and we'll actually mount the engine up from the bottom is how I want to do it. I wanna have engine, transmission and K member all mount in. Uh, we might have to do this alignment process again, but I wanted to try it out, make sure I understood everything. And yeah, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Just doing some measurements. 
Uh, it does help to have two people, but you can also just kind of get them laid out and get them uh, on the marks and it works out uh, pretty well. On to the next step. I want to do a quick check with the suspension actually mounted onto the new K-member to make sure that uh, my lower control arm all works with the new holes and everything looks uh, really good. One of the things that uh, I kind of mentioned that it is lower weight, but it's not the lightest K-member out there. This is not a drag racing uh, kind of K-member. You can see that there is a good amount of bracing here. So this is a really good K member for if you want to do road racing or autocross, a drag one, uh, why it would be lighter. It's, it doesn't have all these extra supports uh, in here that can take all the extra load that comes with uh, road racing. Uh, these big tires put a lot into uh, the suspension. So you want to make sure that you are using a strong enough K member. Uh, so like a factory K member, Maximum Motorsports, there's probably a couple other brands out there uh, Griggs Racing, those ones have all are strong enough. They've uh, been tried and tested. But I also wanted to talk about the the bolt holes. I didn't really talk about. It. I just mentioned that they are higher than stock. Didn't really mention why that is uh, needed. These holes change your roll center. So this lower one will be for a car that's uh, you know not as lowered as much or is maybe closer to a factory height. It will keep that uh, roll center up above ground. Uh, as you lower a car, uh, your roll center drops, uh, not proportionally, it drops a lot. So you don't want your roll center to be below ground. So raising these uh, lower mounts gets that uh, roll center back up above ground. So I'm gonna probably be running in those top holes because I run the car pretty low and then I can also adjust my roll center with this uh, upper control arm, which is you know, obviously not uh, factory for most cars. Uh, so I can try to adjust that. I try to get my roll center um, right now I've been running almost three uh, and three quarters or something like that uh, above ground. We got the engine onto the K member. I got it on the, the rear hole. So it's an inch further rearward than uh, factory. So we'll have to get it up. I think there should be plenty of room between the firewall. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be a concern. The drive shaft will be something that I'll, I'll need to check and then an exhaust will likely need to be modified to uh, shorten it up an inch. But I started fitting up the, the steering rack. So I do have a manual rack, so plenty of clearance uh, kind of fitted up in there. There is tons and tons of room between it and the, the oil pan. So it'd be nice if I could even get the engine like lower and further back, but that would require some more modifications. I am already on solid mount, so it is uh, a little bit lower. I can't remember. I think it's like three quarters of an inch or maybe more uh, lower. And then, uh, yeah, we're obviously rearward. So I have plenty of room between it and the, the steering rack, which is, which is very nice. So we'll get this guy pulled back out of there. I'm going to wrap up the video right here. I still got a few other things to figure out before we can go and put this uh, engine and suspension back into the into the car but we've test fitted this uh, k member in there we've gone through the alignment process and the squaring to get it nice and square to the in the car so that is all good i did modify the upper control arm brackets to uh, fill in that uh, gap that we were seeing in between the k member and the frame so that's going to be all nice and flush now uh, but yeah i'm going to end it right here if you want to see what's coming up for the car, like what is maybe going behind the, the engine, hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.